Ben, are you done watching baseball? I don't know, I, I watched it. Will you watch it? Yeah. Did you watch it? Did, are the Cubs on tonight? They play, I don't think they so. Play they last play night. Last night. Uh, yeah. that the they won, they're one and one, right? No, they're two and one. Oh, two and one. After the big slide, you see that? I, I mean, when the Pirates were playing the Cubs, I mean, that was kind of a, that was kind of a historic moment, you know, the two most losing teams in baseball history or something. <laughs> there it goes. There you go. Oh, you got it? Yep, they're on now. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. You're scary. Hello, <laughs> 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 everybody. Good evening, everyone. It's 7 o'clock, and we'd like to get our meeting started. If we could all please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you. Angie, would you like to do the roll call? Uh, Thomas is not here. Otto? Here. Westover's here. Ingstrom? Here. Dockett? Here. Braun? Here. Chick? Here. Great. Okay. Uh, it takes us to our uh, consent agenda, the minutes and bills. I would like to have them both pulled, please. Okay. Can we, can we put them on at first, or do we do have to go to the end? No, they can go on. They can make it zero when we get to that. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, so the consent agenda is going to be moved down to agenda items, which will take care of that on the adopt the balance of the agenda. So obviously we have the minutes and bills, and we, that will be number zero on the agenda items. Is there any other additions or deletions or changes from anyone? I'll make a motion to approve the revised agenda. Ingstrom motion, check supported. Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion passes. That takes us on to our first call to the public. It's an opportunity for anyone to get up and speak, share your thoughts. Please keep in mind it is not a question and answer session for anyone up here, and we do try to limit you to three minutes. Do we have any speakers this evening? All right. We'll go on to our correspondence and announcements. 
Anyone have anything that they'd like to share? Howard, you got anything in addition to your manager's report? Uh, yeah, just one item that I just want to, uh, it, it is in my manager's report, but I want to uh, make a, a special note of it. We're without one of our main cameras. Um, our cameras went out, um, so we'll be making an emergency expenditure to purchase a new camera. We will be upgrading the camera and purchasing an HD camera um, and uh, potentially looking at some additional improvements, but that'll be, that'll be purchased and decided here in the next few days um, so that we can get two cameras back and running. Any idea on how much, uh, Howard? A new HD camera is probably in the neighborhood of 1500 to $2,500, probably somewhere in that range, probably looking at about two grand. Um, I haven't done the research yet, but we're going to need a new camera and uh, we'll, we'll look at some of the other stuff as well. Thank you. All right. Um, hello, Mr. Thomas has joined us. Thank you. Okay, that takes us to our department head reports. We got Bill Wagner here for police and fire this evening. Uh, did anyone have any questions on his reports? Got Wagner support? Yes. Yes. What you have, Wayne? Uh, I only have a question. Uh, I read where it said if if a fireman comes to Northfield Township from another agency who's already trained and everything, that the Northfield Township will no longer have to send them through training. Is is there anything in that true or what? No, that's that's correct. You can, there's basically two portions of your training. There's EMS training and then there's firefighter training. So if somebody comes from another department, they moved into the area, they have their EMS and they have their fire training, there's no need for us to train them again. We just have to bring them up to speed on Northfield Township so, equipment. So we, we, save, we save money. Yes, absolutely. Okay. Uh, it's the same for the police department or no? Um, well, we generally only hire um, MCOL certified officers. Oh, we all, we all don't right. send, in the fire department, we'll send, we have three in the fire academy right now. Okay. We don't send people generally to the police academy. Okay. They already have that when they okay. apply. Th thank you very much. Uh, go ahead, Janet. Could you explain what the Vigilant Solutions um, is, exactly what it does? So it's it's and I'm not exactly sure, I probably should have had Lieutenant Green here for this, but it's, it's software that police agencies use all over the United States that stores and keeps um, license plate information so that um, when we put that license plate information in, it gives us where that has been seen, the, that plate has been seen or, you know, throughout the United States where it's been located. And there's another, and, and I'm not sure if Lieutenant Green was going to take the next step with this and get the actual readers, um, like I know the Ypsilanti Police Department uses them, where they, it's just a, a, a piece of equipment on their vehicle that can actually read license plates as it's going down the road or through a parking lot. And if it gets a hit on uh, a license plate that is wanted someplace else, it will notify them of that. So. It's, uh, it's newer, modern technology as it relates to doing investigations and, and researching license plate information. Go ahead, Wayne. Uh, are we on the police report, or, or, or can I ask the same question? I mean, I mean are you through with the fire department re report? Unless anybody has any other questions. Uh, okay, well, I, I would like, to, I'm confused on this. Uh, I'm speaking of the, the system the system that uh -huh. on. I'm confused on this. Uh, are we voting on the $7,500? Yes. For, for, let me, fin let oh. me finish, please. Uh, for, uh, for one year? Uh, or is it forever after? I mean, it's, it's kind of like dues or something, the 7,500. So, so, but it doesn't say anything about it being for one year here that, that I can see. And, and if it's 7,500 every year, I want to make clear if we're voting for 
justice one right. year, Let, or are we voting for let's do this. forever? Let, let's not vote on that tonight until Lieutenant Green is here to okay. speak on that. Yeah, um, I'd I, be more comfortable with that. Also. Okay. They, uh, thank you. I, I have no more questions. Just, just to let you know, um, Mr. Dockett, that usually when you talk about subscription prices for software, it is on an annual basis. Uh, yeah, okay, but... But are we voting on it for forever? Is what I'm. If we vote on this, it doesn't say anything in here that they want it for the next 20 years. I mean, so that's. I'm just confused about that. How does that work? So we'll find it, out. It, it says that it would be op uh, right. an optional renewal every year. So it, we would have to renew that. But but I don't know what that renewal cost is because he didn't put it in here and I didn't ask him. So. Let's just wait on that okay, if everybody well, else I, I, I guess I missed it where it says. Uh, the very uh, last paragraph. Oh. Uh, in his, in the, in the police operations report from Lieutenant Green on the second page in the middle of the page. Well, it, it's, uh, I don't see it. Oh, well, that's the report, isn't it? Oh, well, that's, yeah, well, that's not what we're voting on, no more. Uh, no. Well, yeah. Okay, okay. Let, let's wait till he can answer those questions. Thank I don't you. think there's any hurry to no. okay. get thank this. You, thank you very much. Yeah, I, I, it's not on here. Why are we voting on it? It's not on there. <laughs> uh, don't you think it should be on there? Huh? <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> okay, so um, any other questions for Bill before we get to his action items? No. All right. So we have just the uh, one personnel um, motion that needs to be taken care of. Correct. All right. I'll make a motion to approve the appointment of Corey Allen Johnston for the position of Northville Township Police Reserve Officer contingent upon su successful completion of all departmental requirements. Ooh. Support. Uh, Inks are motioned and Chick supported. <laughs> and Westover. Uh, what, what are we voting on? The hiring of Corey oh, and... Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Right. Sorry. Um, those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion passes. All right. That takes care of the police and fire. Let's move on to our wastewater treatment plant. Mm, Tim, you got anything? Well, anyone have any questions for Tim? No? Uh, yeah, Tim, is there anything yeah, you yeah, want? Yeah, oh, yeah, okay. Yes. Well, Yes, it, it takes it takes me a, a minute or two. Uh, Tim, how old is this camera that uh, you're talking about replacing? Do we want to do this now during oh, questions oh, from oh. the report, or we'd want to do this on the action item? Oh, uh, that I guess on the action would be fine. I I, I don't know. Uh, is it all in this one report? Unless there are no other questions, I guess we could move to that. Oh, okay. Well, uh, I. I don't know if there are or not. Okay. Probably not. Uh, well, my, I, I have one question and the other one. Is this 20,600? Is that pretty high? Higher than normal? 20,000. Oh, 20 million? Or, oh, seriously. You're excuse. talking the flow? Yeah, yeah, yeah 20, 20 million. No, that's, I mean, it's not much different than, you know, the, the year preceding us. Well, know, it's, 2014. It's more than 2 so million. So we're, we're more lower. Than, more than 2 million. We're more, yeah. lower this but, year, yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, oh, it's lower. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you. And then, uh, then if I may, the, the next question was the camera. Okay. The, the camera. We're, we don't want to replace or fix the whole camera. If you think of it as a car, it's the differential in the, the rear end that is broke. Um, the parts that broke, they don't make anymore, so it would have to be upgraded. So just to repair the differential end of it is 5,300 bucks. Or we can purchase the engine and the transmission and differential for 7,800. Um, this, this cost is not for the camera itself, but just for the motor and the gearing and everything that drives the camera. So um, this was purchased in 2005, so it's 10 years old. But um, I, for $2,500 difference between purchasing the whole drivetrain or just the parts of it, we still would have a motor that could be used in case the brand new one broke down for some reason. So that was why I was um, requesting purchasing the new 
we're just just fixing the old broken parts. Oh, I'm sure it makes sense to you, but it just seems like you tend to go for the for the new stuff rather than fix the old. But that's that's my opinion. So, uh, but thank you. Uh, one more thing. Uh, on the on the manhole, can I go to the manhole? Well, do we want to finish an action item first, or? Okay. Okay. And make a motion to approve the purchase of the uh, pipeline inspection camera um, at the cost of seven thousand eight hundred and forty-two dollars and fifty cents uh, for the wastewater treatment plant. I support. Uh, Chick motioned. Otto supported. Those in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion passes. Thank you. Wayne, did you have anything else for uh, Yes. Okay. Uh, I, I did want to ask you, Tim, if you, uh, we already voted on them, but I, I did. Do you uh, keep a log on these large items when you buy them so we have some idea how long they last? I, I'm sorry. I couldn't hear all of what you were I'm saying. I'm sorry. I said... Do you have a log that you keep on on these on these high dollar things like this that that uh, I know that doesn't seem like very much money to, uh, in your department, but uh, so that you know how long we have it. I mean, how long? The, what's the, the shelf life is? We do have, and actually that is part of our asset management plan too, is keeping track of how old everything is and when it's going to be needed replaced. So yes, we do. Okay, I, now I want to ask about the manhole. If I might. Yes, sir. Uh, do, do you know who raised the manhole? We believe this was done during construction of installing the whole pipeline in that subdivision. Um, we did find a, a couple other manholes that were raised up with the same type of brick. Uh, oh, oh, but the, the, you had nothing to do with that? We did not, no, sir. Okay. Is it in the road? This right. is actually in their driveway. It's a dead-end manhole right in their driveway. And and you're asking us what you what we would think you should do. Uh, my, my question is, what do you think we should do? Well, luckily, I get to defer that to the board as to what action we should do. Okay. I'm not sure what uh, what this would bring with other homes if if somebody else has a manhole in their driveway. How do you really prove whose fault it is that their driveway broke? Cement tends to break no matter where it's at, whether there's a manhole there or not. It heaves, frost breaks it. So, uh, if I may, um, I asked Tim and I talked about this issue, and I had suggested Tim that uh, to Tim that we bring it in front of the board. And the I can't hear you. I had suggested to Tim that we bring this issue in front of the board, and the reason being is, although I'll just speak for myself, although I think that that the board should authorize to fix the manhole and the concrete around the manhole. Technically, the concrete around the manhole is private infrastructure. And you get into a very touchy area when we're using taxpayer funds to fix private infrastructure. And so in order to um, in, in order to protect staff in this situation, protect who? Staff in this situation, oh, I felt it appropriate to bring that in front of the board. I do think, though, that in this particular case, the concrete around the manhole, it's only natural to replace the concrete around the manhole, as that is part of the infrastructure that is, in fact, failing. Would you agree, Tim, or did yeah, I, I would explain agree. that? Okay. I, and I, a contractor I, confirmed that. Yes. I, I couldn't hear much of that. What, what, what are we deciding? That we are going to do it or we're not? Or haven't we decided? That's what we're deciding. Okay, yeah, I couldn't, I couldn't, hear, I couldn't hear Howard. So, so Tim, is, is the repair to the driveway just the portion around the manhole cover and That's not yes, any, any radius <laughs> outside of that? I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt you. I apologize. No, that's all right. It's about a 10 foot by 6 foot square of their driveway. So it is not the whole driveway. It is a piece that already has um, expansion joints in it. Okay. So in order for them to, to repair the perimeter around the manhole cover, we have to go outside that perimeter. We could repair it without fixing their concrete. 
it wouldn't look very nice. The manhole would then stick up above the rest of the concrete that is dropped down, but it is possible. But that leaves you open to snow blowers running into it and starting to knock it off kilter. And I don't, it could be a small tripping hazard, yes. The concrete the way it is now is a trip hazard. Where is Lakewood Court located at? The Wildwood sub. Oh, okay. This is the only house so in there that has a manhole in their driveway. Oh, I bet you they love that. Um. <laughs> where, where, where did you say it was? The Wildwood sub. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So they also are taxpayers. So, okay. If you would like, I could uh, I could get more quotes. This was just from one local cement contractor. Uh, the local one's the best. Obviously, we wouldn't go with one that would be higher if we got more quotes. But who was the who was the local one? Um, Tim Mavy. He's okay. Been around here for a long time. Okay, uh, I'll make the motion to. Uh, to approve uh, the repairs for the manhole culver and the driveway in the amount of $1,300. Support. Um, idle motion and docket supported. Any discussion? Well, it's a local. It's a local uh, contractor. Those in favor? But aye. 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 All right. Thank you. Thank right, anything you. else for Tim? Mm -hmm. Great. On to our community center. We have Tammy here, our director, for anyone who has questions for her. No? No questions? I'd just like to say thank you. Wonderful job. Oh. Great seeing all the cars there all the time. Thank you. <laughs> all right. So if we have no questions for Tammy, then we'll move on to their financial report. Anyone with questions for Kiafe? No? All right. That takes us on to our manager's report. Howard, is there anything that you'd like to go uh, share further with us? or No. no? The, Anyone? Only, the only thing was the camera, unless anybody has any questions. Right. Questions for Howard? Go ahead, Jackie. I was wondering, why is it taking us so long to do uh, an appraisal on those easements? for the non-motorized pathway? That's a good question. I, I call, call them once a week. Um, I actually, I called them just a few days ago. Um, the contract that we signed was a 90-day contract, and uh, he's probably 30, oh. days, 30 days into getting it done. Um, so it's, it's coming, but I'm for a 60-day contract. Yeah, so, so he only has 30 days to go. He has 30 days to go. Well, okay. We'll keep watch because it, it just seems like it's taken forever. We talked about it this summer about having to do this, and now it's it's in October and we still don't have a, a solution on it. I will. I understand. All right. Well, Anyone else? For, go ahead, Jen. Yep. Are we okay with the grant since we haven't actually started work on the non-motorized mm -hmm. path? We are. Yep, I've, I've been in touch with the county. We've um, we've continuously updating the county as to what's going on. So that we only voted on the appraisals a few meetings ago. It, we it took a while to get the bids for the appraisals, um, and once we got them, there was a 60-day contract. Great. That takes us on to our ZBA report. Uh, Jackie, anything to report? Um, the last meeting, I was not in attendance because I was out of town, but they did have a um, uh, a resident um, come to the board, uh, come to the ZBA uh, for a variance to propose a, a barn setback, which they approved. So that's all we have. All right, great, thank you. Uh, planning commission report. Anything to report, Janet? Uh, <laughs> the planning commission met on October 7th. There were two items on the agenda. 
Chris Olson from the Huron River Watershed Council gave a follow-up presentation on the green infrastructure workshop the Planning Commission held a few meetings ago. Ms. Olson gave information on language in our master plan that is already reflective of the Council's policies as well as some suggestions for new language in a future master plan to ensure the safety and quality of the townships, lakes, rivers, streams, and wetlands as well as other natural features. Um, there's also a discussion on the revising of our bylaws again. There are some items in our bylaws that need to be comply with state policies. Some areas could be viewed as more restrictive and some that could use a second look and there are some that will be debated. Great. Uh, Parks and Rec. Tracy, anything? Um, nothing that's not in the manager's report. We do have a meeting scheduled for this Thursday evening. Great. Thank you. And that completes our reports and updates. It takes us on to our agenda items. And we'll start with zero, the minutes and bills. And ready. we're ready. Uh, the, the minutes uh, of the 22nd, page two. Uh, no, sorry. Uh, page two. Oh, yeah, page two. Uh, uh, number nine. Number nine. The Michigan Transportation Request to Waive Address Applications. Uh, we, uh, I, I, uh, it says $50 fee. I thought we talked about it and we were going to put $350 in there, which was the total. Is that not right? And I don't see the 350 in here. I think we just waived the fee. I don't think there was a a 350. Well, there, there, was, there was seven of them. There were there were seven right, of them. But just so, I thought we so uh, approved the whole waiving period. You know, just not. Yeah, I I would like to see a total on it. I don't know about anybody else, but. Uh, you Sure. That What's that? She will add for each of seven addresses. So she, she what? She's going to add seven? Yes. Oh, okay. Well, thank you. Uh, that was on my minutes. Uh, the bills, the bills are, uh, I'd like to know, let me see. I'm going to get this straight here. Triangle towing. $132. Why are we paying, or why did we pay $132 to Triangle Towing? To take a rescue truck to Brighton Ford. Okay. Uh, next thing, I uh, noticed that uh, uh, we have a Brighton Ford repair for one thousand four hundred sixteen dollars and thirteen cents. Uh, I have noticed a courtesy car and a porter driver coming to the township to pick up a police car, driving it back to Brighton Ford, getting the car repaired, driving it back down to Northfield Township to deliver it. Uh, deliver the car and driving their car back to Brighton Ford. Uh, you know, uh, is there is there a way? Can we do this in some better way than paying uh, a courtesy car and a, uh, to, to come and pick up the cars and take them back to Brighton and we take them pay. back here? And we don't uh, pay for that. Excuse me. We don't pay for that. That's, the, the that's part Ford of the service. Well, you, you might not pay for it, but it's fourteen dollars. It's a fourteen hundred sixty. What now? I mean, who who pays for it then? If we don't pay for it in the bill, who pays? It's a courtesy that most are, dealerships offer. Are you looking offer. at the open? Cause what I see in here is Brighton Ford is for suspension and brakes on a vehicle. Are we looking at the same thing? I I, I understand it, but He's saying we, that's we, we send cars to Brighton Ford. With a courtesy driver and a vehicle, uh, we we can't we can't get something done locally. I mean, uh, you can tell me that we don't pay for it, but 
what, uh, uh, what we, uh, there's another bill in here for, for $784 this month for Brighton Ford. So it just seems to me like we could get some of this done locally. Uh, it's a waste of money, in my opinion. Thank you. The reason we go to Brighton Ford is because it's cheaper. And a lot of the work that they do is warranty work. Um, and then the only time we use the courtesy um, car is when we're doing just oil changes. And their oil changes are cheaper than, than what we get around here. And the, the two repairs that you're speaking of, one is for my vehicle and one was for that fire truck vehicle that was out of service. So we, we actually save money by them. Personnel costs at not having to take the vehicle up. Oh, and, I'm and glad you saved us a lot of money. Thank you. Okay, let's move on. Um, I'll make a motion to approve the minutes and the bills. Support. In, um, Ingstrom motion. Uh, Westover supported. Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? What, 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 what's this? What are you voting on? We're approving the motion, the minutes and the bills. Oh, okay. Those in Aye. favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion passes. On to number one, the Kiwanis request to use 75 Barker Road. Once again, they'd like to use their Christmas tree uh, sale there. I'll make a motion to approve the Whitmore Lake Area Kiwanis Club um, use of 75 Barker Road for their annual Christmas tree sales that will run through Wednesday, November 25th through no later than Friday, December 18th. Uh, Ingstrom motion and Thomas supported. Th those in favor? Uh, Aye. Those opposed? Motion are passes. Are they going to give us a Christmas tree for the township hall? Uh, on to number two of the agenda items is the Northfield Human Services request to use the second floor of the public safety building. Any questions on this? I make, sure, make a motion to approve. Um, Northfield Human Services using the upstairs portion of this building for the Toys for Tots program starting December 1st through the end of December. Yes, support. Ingstrom motion, or auto, Ingstrom motion, auto supported. <laughs> Those in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion passes. Boardroom construction. We've talked about this before. We have our total number here. Uh, how do we want to proceed? Oh, Wayne, go ahead. Um, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I, I tried to uh, calculate this out myself, which I'm not too good at. Uh, but it come to $65,000 from what, what I could figure out here. And uh, that's... Uh, with no drop ceiling, no electrical outlet, that's unless we're going to have these cords run like we do here now. No H, no heat and air, no furniture. Uh, are, are we still at 55000 on this, Howard? Yes. That's what I added. Uh, well, you know, at first it was like 150000 or more. What what are we omitting that that uh, I mean Mr. I don't Dockett, have much faith in these figures. I, I'm sorry, Mr. Dockett, that you don't have faith. I I've done I've done all I can at this point. Um, you know, we would get a few more additional quotes if the board wanted to move forward. But in terms of in terms of the legwork that we've done, I think we've gone as far as we can. Um, without direction from the board if this is something that you want to do. The, the, biggest, um, the biggest omission from this project, as opposed to what we were talking about previously, is that there's no HVAC work and there's no drop ceiling. And the HVAC work, if you recall, was pretty expensive. The drop ceiling um, generated a di uh, some significant costs because of the sprinkler systems and then we're also taking out the architect and um, the construction contractors or uh, the um, um, construction managers. Um, it, it, you know, I, I, I believe this will work. 
Um, I, I have faith that it'll be better sound quality. My only concern is I can't be 100% sure of the sound quality um, at the other end of the room because we're not dropping the ceiling, we're not closing it off, and we're not redoing the HVAC. If we did all that, we'd be back up to um, we'd be back up to the costs from before. This is what uh, almost unanimously the board members wished to look at, which was a very pared down version of how to improve um, uh, the other side of the building for uh, a better meeting space. Um, just go through it real quick, um, and then I will, uh, uh, and then, then it's, you know, I need some direction from the board. Um, the first uh, item is you've got under carpet, you've got two quotes for carpeting. Um, the first quote for carpeting, we only quoted the labor uh, because we never went to Donald McNabb company and actually picked out what carpet we wanted. The second quote, they gave us uh, three options uh, for uh, a sort of low, uh, low range, mid range, low mid, low mid for the three various options, the main conference room only, uh, the main conference room plus the AV area and the main conference area, AV area and lobby, we would be going with option one on the carpet. Um, the dais, um, I, we'd still probably try to do a little bit more research into figuring out what the seating uh, uh, furniture is going to be, but if we were to do a sort of custom option that would be end up being kind of cubicle panels that would be built in sort of a dais format, as opposed to, you know, a carpenter coming in here, it would be $4,500. Um, the painting, um, it's an M and B painting, is a local contractor. The total cost is $7,745. That is basically black paint on the ceiling, black paint on all of the fixtures and the pipes. Um, that's one uh, sanding, because as you see, if you look up, you see um, you see the drywall compound is not finished. So we would. He would go, he would sand, finish, uh, and then paint. Uh, it would basically be, a, 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 it wouldn't be a perfect paint job, but it, I think it would turn out looking nice. We would not be painting this side of the room, just that side. Uh, that's 7745 The lighting, we went with a local contractor as well, which is EDSS. They've done good work for us. Uh, they have a lighting plan, um, and they uh, have an installation quote that is total of $11,617. On the audio vi video, uh, it's still a bit in flux. We would be going with Mercury Sound and Audio as a company, not Ann Arbor Audio. Um, and uh, you can see uh, the second quote there, new cameras and computer to be purchased by Northfield Township, $4,000, and then AV equipment upgrade uh, and moving the equipment to the other side of the building. And we might want to look at some sound improvements in some amplifiers, but if you see above you, the idea was to literally take these, these amplifiers that are the speakers that are literally above you, um, and there are uh, nine of them in a square format and move them to the other side of the building and then evaluate the sound quality as we go. Um, we would need to build a wall um, and the wall would uh, essentially tee off uh, down in the corner to create a room. Uh, we would be going with um, uh, interstate restoration and construction um, and that would roughly be $20,000 to build the room. Uh, we would also be installing some doors for emergency exits and constructing some walls, uh, or excuse me, some double doors for the entrance, and that would be 9,363. Mr. Dockett, I hope that my figures are correct, but when I added it up, it came out to be about $55,000, between about 50 and 55,000. Um, I, I, I think that uh, I, I can't foresee any other issues. I wasn't planning on putting outlets in walls, um, but, uh, um, I think there are outlets down there. Um, if, if you guys want to move forward, what I will do is continue to come back to you and give you regular updates, let you know what the, what the quotes are, what the cost is, but um, you know, I, I, if you want to move forward, we can move forward, but I think now's the time to provide some direction. Go ahead, Wynn. Uh, well, it sounds like a drip, drip, drip uh, to me. How can we how can we vote on something when we don't have the total bid? I'll make a motion myself. And, and we have we have very few people 
than attend the meetings, and I think it's unneeded. Thank you. I'll make a motion to approve the new boardroom construction for a cost not to exceed, I'll say 60000 for possible overruns. So for not, not to exceed 60000 What? for what? For possible overruns. So overruns would be separate or including? It in, so that yeah, you said 50 to 55, so I'll, I'll just cap it at 60, okay. if that's all right. Sure. Support. Um, Ingstrom motioned and Chick supported. Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? No. That takes us on to number four, the downtown planning group. Oh, can I make one more comment? Yep. I, 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 uh, <laughs> I don't want to volunteer him, but I will be eliciting Mr. Wagner's uh, expertise uh, in coordinating a lot of this and going through the <coughs> construction process. Say that again, you don't want to volunteer me? I, I am. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for no, volunteering, no, no. Bill. That's really <laughs> nice of you. Just so you know that, that uh, so it'll be in good hands and, and I'll keep you guys informed and updated as to when things are happening and what the cost is and, and um, so that you are all in kept in the loop. Great. Okay, so, so on to our downtown planning group. Um, anyone have any questions? Is this a downtown thing? Yeah, for the downtown planning group. Uh, uh, is there a cost to this? Is, is there a budget for this? Th there is no budget. The cost is zero. Um, the uh, the the last time the last board meeting it seemed very clear to me um, and if and if I would ask probably just to make it official and a motion but it seemed clear to me that you did not want to pay professional consultants to be involved in this to keep cost at zero so it would be a zero cost thank um, you thank you very um, much. but so if that's if that is the way you would like it to be um, you may want to. Good, good job, Howard. Zero. <laughs> Thank you. Can, can we buy some donuts? I vote yes. Are we allowed to buy donuts? Huh? Are we allowed to buy donuts? Are we allowed, are we allowed to? Don't worry about sorry, it. Sorry, I can't hear. Oh, Jan, go ahead. I'm sorry. So for the people that might be interested in volunteering their time for this um, planning uh, project what exactly is the scope of the project what is the what is the plan for the plan sure so uh, um, it, let me just read the memo um, and then and then I can elaborate um, it says this will be a volunteer run effort led by myself and Barb Griffith um, jump down we will invite interested residents residents and interested parties to submit it new to Oh, so I didn't, I didn't touch on it uh, in my memo, so I apologize. Um, the, the purpose of the process will be to try and unite uh, us and coalesce a vision for downtown Whitmore Lake and do so in a way that creates sort of meaningful action items, meaningful projects that can be accomplished in the short term uh, and in the medium term and to look at a vision from a long-term basis but to create a plan that is actually implementable that is heavy on uh, sort of grassroots implementation specifics and so you know it's it's one thing to say well we could <laughs> we could create you know uh, an entire new downtown on the Van Curler property but the Van Curler property is and, and maybe we could, maybe we could do that in five years, I don't know, but realistically the Van Curler property is two or three million dollars and a development proposal like that is pretty significant and it creates and takes significant capacity. That's not something that I see as a sort of a realistic possibility in the next few years, um, but there may be projects um, that are realistic possibilities in the next few years that we can work on. Um, and that we can do uh, and discuss an overall vision of what we want downtown Whitmore Lake to look like and try and create projects and action items that are implementable with the resources and the capacity that we have. So for example, you know, the Kiwanis. The Kiwanis is operating in one of the buildings downtown. 
I was there over the weekend and they generated a pretty decent amount of foot traffic. So I commend the Kiwanis for taking a, taking a, taking a step, taking a, a bold move to say, hey, maybe we, could, maybe we can make something like that work. Those are small, those are, those are implementable ideas um, that can in time create capacity uh, long term. So I think that's really what the focus of this is. Um, and the other part of it is we've all sort of talked about what to do about town town, but have we discussed it in its sort of very realistic context? Um, and so, you know, that, that's really going to be the, the charge. It's not, it's not a traditional planning process where we create all kinds of beautiful concepts and ideas um, that we don't have either the funds or the capacity to implement. So one of the things that, you know, one of the things that is going to be a hot topic of conversation is 75 Barker. We own 75 Barker. 75 Barker is an opportunity. We own it. We can do something. Um, that's a doable project in, in many ways. Other things that communities have done when they've had vacancies is to do art, is to get uh, uh, business owners to allow for art displays in windows um, so that local artists can sell their work. Um, it's, it's a small little step. It's a, it's, a, it's a step to create some revitalization. Uh, we've built a dog park. We built a dog park for less than $5,000. It's probably one of the most used assets in this community. I, there's constantly people at that dog park and it was built for virtually nothing. Um, so, you know, I'm hoping that that's the level of conversation that comes out of it. Um, that's, that's where my head is. I'll make a motion to approve and support the volunteer downtown planning group led by Howard Fink and Barb Griffith. Thanks for motion. Thomas uh, supported. Those in favor? Aye. Th those opposed? All right. Motion passes. Well, what did you just vote on? Uh, number four? Yes. Okay. Well, I'd like to say Qantas did good downtown. They're not paying any rent. They're not paying any utilities. I could run a business like that myself. Thank you. Mr. Dockett, Kiwanis is, is it's doing a good thing for the community, for the downtown. Well, it's pretty silly for you to sit there and say how good they were doing when they're not paying any bills. Anybody would know who could do that. It's not a for-profit place. Let's move on to number five, the resolution 15-532 for the special assessment resolution number three. Uh, in front of you is simply a resolution to set the public hearing. We're not, there's nothing of substance being voted on tonight. It is in relationship to the Whitmore Lake SAD. It sets the public hearing, it sets the date of the public hearing. Uh, the one correction uh, that would, I'd make into the resolution, and I'd ask this be made um, via motion, uh, as part of the motion, is instead of it saying in the print edition of AnnArbor.com, it's really the print edition of Ann Arbor News. Is that right, Paul? Yeah, I think so. It's it's probably a nothing change, but just to be safe. Brian, is that what we discovered, you and Steve Mann? Ann Arbor News. They, they changed their name back to the Ann Arbor News. That isn't back to the newspaper that writes my name. Okay, so it's not AnnArbor.com, it's Ann Arbor News. And that would be on page two in italicies. I'll make the motion to accept the resolution that the board needs to set the time and date of the public hearing on the Whitmore Lake SAD assessment rule. For 7 p.m. November 10th. For 7 p.m. Um, November 10th. November 10th. 2015. 2015, sorry. All right. Um,
more couples as opposed to young families, it, the, the, the burden shifts. And so um, the, uh, as we've talked about many times before, the police department as a collective bargain unit has a very strong uh, perspective from the sense that when they add up all their hard cap revenue and divide that by the cost associated with their plan, they get a decent plan. But when you look at the administration side and what their costs will be, um, it doesn't even come close. And so what I've suggested for this year is not to have as good of an insurance as we did last year. Uh, it's about two to three hundred dollars less uh, in your HSA uh, from last year uh, to this year, uh, but that we uh, offer the same uh, insurance to the police department that we do to the administration. And so what we did was we looked at where the police department was in relationship to the hard caps. We increased the police department slightly and we brought the administration up to that level. And that is two to three hundred dollars less than what it was last year. Um, we are staying with the same plans. We looked at a number of different options. We looked at self-funding the optical and the dental, the vision and the dental. We chose not to do that because of the uh, too high end of a risk. We could have saved probably in the neighborhood of three to four thousand on the self-funding option, but the high end risk side was too great. We looked at HMO options. HMO options were, were, were slightly cheaper, but on the neighborhood of maybe five dollars a paycheck per employee. We decided that it was not worth it to take away uh, the freedom of choice for that small amount of money. We looked at all of the plans that Blue Cross Blue Shield offered. We looked at gap plans. Um, the only thing we didn't look at again this year was self-funding the entire thing, and that's because uh, with the group that we have and some of the medical history of the individuals that we have, we will not be quoted on a self-funded plan. Um, so we just didn't... And, and you have to be very careful on making sure that the township has enough reserves. Correct. And so we looked at lots of different options. And what I can tell you is that, and what we've talked about, is that there are a number of people that work for the township that are not that do not get significant salaries that are, you know, that, 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 that do have to, because of the salaries, are paycheck to paycheck. And so, you know, we do need to offer um, a, uh, an affordable insurance package. Um, so basically what I'm suggesting is to opt out of the hard caps and add about, I think in my memo it says 12 to 15,000, I don't remember the exact number, but basically end up getting uh, the silver plan and the bronze plan. If you're a family in the silver plan, we'll fund your HSA up to 60, I forget what my memo says, 6350 or 6550, I don't recall. Uh, and on the silver side, uh, up to 4150. Silver 4150, bronze 6350. If you remember last year, the silver was funded, I think at 5,000 and the bronze was funded at 6550. So you're anywhere from 200 to $600 cheaper than what you were. Um, so there was a 6%, 7% increase. We're not, we're not equal to what we were last year. It's slightly less. Yeah, I say something, please. Uh, we're paying between six hundred and nineteen hundred dollars a month for our insurance for fifteen people. Uh, and I'd like to say we have many residents in Northfield Township who have no health insurance for them or their family. And I don't feel that we should be subsidized. They got good insurance. I just don't see why we should be subsidizing uh, the people who work for the township. That's my opinion. We have lots of people who are paying the bills here that don't have any insurance whatsoever. Thank you. Kathy, did you have something? Yeah, how it, where, where it says... Um, and does not require a 20% employee copayment. Do you mean 20% copayment for medical services, like your copay, or do you mean out of their, what percent does an employee contribute for their insurance? What percent of the total cost of the insurance, like if I, if I had insurance, what percent of it would I pay out of my paycheck? It doesn't work that way for Northfield Township. 
Um, what do the employees pay out of their paycheck? Zero. Zero. It doesn't That's virtually unheard of in it's today's not. world. Mi, mi, well, it trust, is. It, it, it doesn't, <laughs> it, it's different in the township because we have a high deductible HSA. So what we do is we set, if you're in the bronze plan, you're either $4,000 or $8,000 deductible. So you don't, your insurance doesn't kick in if you're a family. Yeah, but we're kicking in something for that deductible. Correct, and we're kicking in 6350 it. But we all have deductibles. I mean, where I work, I work for a huge corporation. Yes, but I... I, I pay a lot of my portion of insurance, and I have big deductibles, too. That's a very high deductible, though. That's not that high. It's the highest that Blue Cross Blue Shield offers. Well, that's... All, that's for everyone. I mean, that's just the way it is. My deductible I mean, I, I my insurance much, much keeps going up. I pay a, de a very high deductible, and it's virtually unheard of for employees not to contribute something to their insurance. Well, they, they, they are. I mean, it's very privileged. It's very lucky. They're very. It's it's very wonderful to have that benefit. It's rare and unusual. They they are contributing but it doesn't work that way in terms of contributing on a paycheck basis. The way high deductible HSA plans work is you pick the cheapest plan and then you use the HSA accounts in order to pay for the deductibles. That's the way high deductible HSAs work. There are no copays. But we're, but we're there's, paying the There's no copays. So if, 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 for example, Tim goes to the doctor, he doesn't have the ability to say, I pay $20. He pays the full cost of that doctor until you reach your deductible. That's how my insurance is. That's how, that's how insurance works all the time. Traditionally, you have co-pays and you have prescription drug co-pays. I have certain things like yearly physical that's covered, mammogram, certain things. Nothing else is covered at all until I pay my entire deductible which is thousands of dollars. And in my case, because I'm, I'm a healthy individual, I ne nothing is ever paid for. I pay for everything except my physical <laughs> once a year. Is yours $8,000, though? Because that's Yeah, but we're high. talking like 4005 And even if we buy down some of the de de deductible, they're still not paying anything at all out of their paycheck. So Because this is an alternative to that. Right. The reason their deductible is so high is because they're not. You're talking apples and oranges. Paychecks is apples, and they just say it's oranges. So do they contribute to their HSA? They do. Okay. The the sixty yeah. the the max contribution in the HSA for a family is sixty seven fifty. Under the bronze plan, we would be contributing sixty three fifty they could contribute another $400 to that HSA account. And that's just pre-tax dollars correct. that can be spent on co-pays right. and, and it's, other it's, medical it's, expenses. That's correct. And, and that's not really a contribution. And there's no the point in us moving to... Cost. There's no point in us moving to a copay model because all you're doing is throwing away money if you don't use it. Even the township's perspective, you're just throwing away money. Because if you go to a high deductible HSA account, then at least the township is paying the minimum that they can pay in terms of premiums and then taking the difference and giving that to the employees in a, in a pre-taxed environment. And so everybody is winning. So in essence, this isn't a poor man's um, insurance. It's it's relatively a good insurance. It is a good insurance plan for the township. It is great. It, it is. There's no question that it is a good insurance plan for the township employees. Yeah, when the township good. people are paying for it, yeah, uh, you guys want you want the Cadillac. You know. There's absolutely no question. No, that this is, is not the Cadillac. It is absolutely this is, this good. This is an expense of running our township. These are employees of this township that we pay a salary to. We have a responsibility to our employees as a township. This is not just saying, hey, taxpayers, let's pay for everyone's insurance. These are our employees. We have a responsibility to. We don't have a responsibility to overpay. We're not overpaying. Well, we are. We're taking Janet, it. go ahead. I, I just have a question about the HSA. Uh, did, 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 uh, did these roll over? Yes. Okay. So if, I hate to pick on Tim, 
But if Tim has money in his HSA and he doesn't use that HSA, then that rolls over to the next year for his, his benefit. That is his money. The reason why the police department shifted to this model is when the previous board removed retiree health insurance. So they said, fine, we're going to go to, we are going to take the benefit of the hard caps. This is what happened. The hard cap, the, 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 the resolution that you see in front of you, the, the, first of all, you don't have to abide by this resolution. There's no penalty for taking yourself out of the hard caps any longer. All right? There's two things you can do under the state of Michigan that they pass this, this law. Most townships, a lot of townships, they'd opt out of the hard caps. They don't, they don't, they've, they've never even gone into this environment. But you can either go under the hard caps or you could go an 80-20 model where the township pays 80% and the employees pay 20%. The police department elected to go under the hard, the board elected to go under the hard caps. The police department took all the money in the hard caps and said, we'll get the cheapest high deductible HSA plan that we can, and we'll take the rest of the money, all of it, and fund all of our HSAs. For the last four years, the police department, up until this year and up until last year, last year they were $100 or $200 short, this year they're $400 short, the police department was able to max out their HSA contributions because they had that much left over. The administration side had, if you looked at the cost of the administration side from the police department, their, their contributions that they would have been able to put in their HSA were almost half, if not less than half. So for example, you know, a family on the administration side would have an $8,000 deductible and they may have a grand or two grand that they can put into their HSA. So they have $6,000 to spend on health insurance before there, there are any benefits that kick in. That's what ended up happening. I think ethically it's hard for me to argue a position where the police department and the police officers get one level of benefit and everybody else gets a lower level of benefit because of the age of those individuals and the makeup of those individuals. It just, to me, it doesn't, it's not, a, it's not an argument that sits well with me. And so this is the only way I know how to make it even and ethical across the board. But I will not deny that it is a good health insurance plan. No question whatsoever, it is good. Does anyone have any further questions on Howard, uh, for Howard? You know, and I know last year we discussed a lot of this with the presentations and everything. Uh, I know it's only as a discussion item, but is anyone, um, I'd be willing to put a motion out there to approve the resolution if no one has any further questions. What, what's that? I, I, are you moving on? No, I'm going to make a motion to approve resolution number 15-531. You're voting on the insurance? Should, you yeah. should read you're just voting on opting out of the hard caps. Opting out of the hard caps. Okay, when you vote for the insurance, let me know. You are voting for the insurance, Mr. Dockett. It's part it's of part the insurance. It's part of it. And this, okay. it does require okay, a roll call. roll call vote. Yeah, it does require it because it's a resolution. Okay, I, want, um, yeah, I want a roll call vote. Yeah. So, um, can you read the resolution I'll so it's part support. of the minutes? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Ingstrom motioned and um, Otto supported. Um, so we have the roll call vote. Thomas? Yes. Otto? Yes. Westover? Yes. Ingstrom? Yes. Docket? No. Braun? Yes. Chick? Yes. Okay, great. Um, and then, Howard, how do you want to handle the health insurance plans and the HSA funding? I mean, is there any further questions? I know we've. I do have to make a comment. Yes, please. Um, I will have to abstain uh, for voting on this because the company that I work for is owned by Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Michigan. All right. Um, can I get some direction from anyone, please, if you'd like to move forward on the... What are you voting on now? You know, for the... He needs the numbers for the HSA, right... Howard, do you want that for the... Yeah, so there are two plans. There's a silver plan and a bronze plan. So the bronze plan is, if you look on your sheet, I know I'm giving you more information than, than you're asking for, but if you look on your sheet, 
Okay, we quoted every single plan from Blue Cross Blue Shield. Okay, the bronze, 4,000, 8,000, it's at the very end. The silver, 2,000, is, is down sort of close there. Um, now, in the beginning, there's some HMO options, and then we get into the PPO options. We've got the silver and the bronze. The bronze is a $4,000 and $8,000 deductible. $4,000 for a single, $8,000 for a um, for a family uh, and uh, your maximum out-of-pocket expense under the bronze plan is, um, t uh, is as long as you stay in network is 6350 for a one person and 12700 for a uh, family or a two person. Um, so that's the bronze. Under the bronze plan I'm proposing that the township fund at 6350 for a family 4775 for a couple, 3200 for a single. Under the silver plan, the silver deductible is um, is 2000 and 4000. 2000 for one person, a 4000 for a family. Um, and I am suggesting that under the silver plan, uh, the family uh, uh, HSA contribution is 4,150 for a couple. It's 2,750, and for a single, it's 1,400. So those are the two plans that we have offered. It was the same plans that we had offered last year. It'll probably be the same plans that we had offered the next year. What the determining factor of cost is how much you fund the HSAs for. Yeah, do you want to? We can just wait to put this on the agenda item because you have just approximately numbers for the twelve thousand, or. Oh well, we, we can't. We can't. We can't perfectly. We can no, perfectly never. calculate okay. because there's a slight differential in cost between silver and bronze. Okay. So we can't. We can't perfectly calculate. But as you see, uh, what Rick did was he put together a spreadsheet for you, um, and it's and it's a good document. And the document is, mm -hmm. looks like this. And at the very end, you see where we're over and under budget. And so if you add up the over budget and under budget in the general fund, we're mostly under budget. In the police department, we're mostly over, we're, we're excuse me, <coughs> flip that. In the general fund, we're mostly under budget. In the police department, we're mostly over budget. Um, and no, the other way around. I keep saying that. Uh, more money for police than for general. And so at the end of the day, you, what, what I did was your negative 7,000. And um, so, it, I mean, it basically adds up to uh, about $12,000 that needs to come from the general fund to fund this program because you add up the general fund and then you add up the negative in the fire fund, and that comes out to about 10,000, um, about 11,000 is what it comes out to. So round up, it's about $12,000. From, from what we have budgeted, we're going about $12,000 additionally to what we have budgeted. There's gonna be l money in, you can see how it works out. You could see the treasurer uh, is, uh, has money left over. You could see that assessing is under budget or is over budget. The community center is over budget. The total of the general fund is over budget by $7,554 if you fund based on my numbers. The, you can see the police, you can see fire, you can see wastewater treatment, you can see the total of all funds if you add them together, but you can't do that because you can't take money from one fund and put it in another fund. So that $4,596.86 that you're actually under budget, it's, it's, an, it's a true number, but it's not totally accurate because if you're under budget, for example, in the police department, you can't take that money and give it somewhere else. Howard, if we were to put together a motion, um, how do you want it specifically said with the, the... The motion is to fund based on the HSA levels. And that, that's what you're approving. You're approving the HSA levels for the employees. Everything else plays out from there. So the motion is two plans, silver and bronze, 
at the at the HSA levels that are indicated in my memo. I make a motion uh, to approve the funding for the HSA levels of the silver and bronze as noted in Howard Fink's memo. Roll call vote. Inkster motion, then we, uh, Westover supported. <coughs> Mr. Dockett has requested a roll call vote. And I will start to my right. Chick? Yes. Braun? Yes. Uh, Dockett? No. Ingstrom, yes. Westover? Yes. Otto? I was just saying. Oh, that's right. Sorry. Uh, Tra uh, Th Thomas? <laughs> Great. Thank you. Motion approved. That takes us on to our second call to the public. Is there anyone that would like to speak this evening? Come on up. Uh, we do um, ask that you keep it to three minutes and keep in mind this is not a question or answer session. Thank you. You bet. You can pick that up if you'd like. For the people listening on TV, they can't hear you. I'm on up here. You yeah. Can you hear me? Yes, that's perfect. You can perfect. hear me now. That's awesome. Um, Chad Marchant, 440 Barker Road. Um, it dawned on me today, I haven't been exactly able to put as much effort into Kiwanis as I wanted, and I don't know how the heck you all do your jobs up here. Um, it's really hard. Uh, between Jackie and everybody else, you, you guys do a darn good job. Um, so I got to give you props for that. I didn't realize I was getting caught up in politics and a lot of things when I first got here, so I was kind of like the Donald Trump of Whitmore Lake. Um, so I, I say all that to say this. One, Wagner, sir, I don't, I don't know always when the appropriate time is to do things, but I need your card again to talk about Barker Road. I found out one of my little girls almost ended up on the highway because one of my other twin daughters was running the other way. And so my wife had to catch one while she was trying to catch the other. And so while we're going to put up a fence, I guess what I'm asking is for you guys just to think about, don't even approach it, but a road, a road bump or whatever it is on that road, because that's that the people drag race down that at night. I've seen my wife walking with her almost getting hit, and it's it's ridiculous. I mean, I personally hope I don't get arrested for this, but want to put spikes out in the road or shoot the tires out or something. Just for God's sakes, not drive down so fast. <laughs> so if there could be a road bump or something that we could do. To, to slow that down. I mean, I, I know it's hard for you guys to do, but it's it's nuts. And so I guess I'm asking for a road bump. That's my three minutes. Thanks for your time, and thank you for all you guys, what you do. Thank you very much. Our next speaker. Dale Brewer, 11548 East Shore Drive, Whitmore Lake. Um, just a couple questions regarding the uh, uh, resolution that was passed for the uh, Whitmore Lake Road uh, SAD district. Um, just like to find out when the uh, costs would be available in the clerk's office if they're not there yet, and also if there's a copy of the plans in the clerk's office or the uh, area in the township where they could be reviewed. So I know that you can't necessarily answer them, but. Uh, be appropriate to have some type of an idea when or if those are available. Thank you. Thank you very much. Do we have another speaker? All right. <coughs> that takes us on to our board member comments. Anyone uh, have any comments? Wayne? Uh, I'd like to uh, remind the people out there that uh, it costs 316000 Seventy-six dollars nineteen cents to run the township from nine from nine nine fifteen to ten eight fifteen, and uh, I'd like I I I don't know if I can get an answer, but I uh, have a question of how much money did we give the Eagle Scout uh, uh, deal? I want I haven't heard anything about that since the. We voted on it. I'd like to know what, what the township's contribution was. I'd like to uh, have everybody buy and use local services. And uh, thank you very much. Howard, would you want to tell me about that? We have zero. Huh? We have nothing. We have not given any money. Thank you. 
Janet, did you uh, did I see you? Yeah, I wanted to recommend that everybody do take the time to stop at the Kiwanis uh, store on uh, Main Street. Uh, I visited over the weekend. They have lots of nice things, and they're looking for donations, and they plan to be there for a while, so um, they're doing a great job. I'll let you know in a minute. Okay. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Uh, Mr. Brewer, the information will be available Thursday. Jackie, or should I skip you and come back? Okay, Tracy. Okay, back. <laughs> okay. Uh, just to give everybody an update on uh, the Kiwanis uh, uh, Weekend Rummage Sales Store. Um, this, we were uh, approached uh, by the owner of the building, and um, we were given a great opportunity. And we thought that if we could be successful for the next three months this will be a permanent store in Whitmore Lake um, and uh, all the funds that we receive from the store go to programming uh, to go to children's programs and uh, children events in Whitmore Lake it does not go outside of Whitmore Lake and everyone in the store is a volunteer so nobody gets paid for what they do um, just so everybody knows, the store hours are on Friday and Saturday. This will only be a weekend store. Um, it's on Friday. The hours are from 3 to 7, and on Saturday, 10 to 1, and we accept um, uh, donations anytime within there. We are a 501c3, so you can take that on on your taxes. Great. Thank you. Okay. Well... I think that concludes our meeting. I'll make a motion to adjourn. Thank you. <laughs> Everyone have a good evening. <laughs>